So I'd like to dive right in, and the first question would be is, you know, what is your overarching philosophy of failure kind of surrounding it for you, how you think about it? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I'm sure you've heard it before, it's just part of the process, and you, as you get older, you want to fail fast and fail often. To avoid failure is probably, um, it's probably unavoidable. So to to make that your definition of success is probably futile. But what you want to do is you want to. I, I kind of tell people you want to proceed in such a way that you have afforded yourself room to fail. Um, and so some people call this contingency plan. Some people, you know, call this. Uh, just being kind of having a forethought in the entire process. But what it really comes down to is is that it's going to happen and it's either going to be very minor ones or it's going to be um, some middle large ones or it could be one huge catastrophic one. And what I often say is try to make your successes small by definition and that way you can keep your failures small by definition. Um, one of the things that my grandfather used to always say was it's not usually one thing that makes or breaks you. It's the culmination of all the little things. And so, you know, smoke, you know, he talks about it a lot of times with, with more personal things, but smoking one cigarette doesn't really kill you. But smoking five a day, every day for 20 years will. You know, it's thousands of little bad decisions that got you to where you are. The same thing goes with working out. You don't go work out one time and, you know, all of a sudden you're the epitome of health. It's the day in and day out that you go work out, that you eat healthy, that brings you there. And so there's really no different in the business model. It's usually not losing one sale that yeah. breaks you, uh, and it's not usually one sale that makes you. It's the day in and day out. And that's why a lot of times in business, so many people focus on the activities um, on the day in and day out standpoint and then kind of look at the 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 results of those activities at a, at a larger kind of time period and so that's what I often tell people is that you know set up lots of little small uh, opportunities for success and that way when you encounter some failure it's easy for you to to learn from it and quickly pivot and move on. Uh, so just so to make sure I get it straight in my head, you're almost saying like kind of distill your successes down into you know. Have I had successful sales calls a day, or have I, uh, you know, been a productive, uh, you know, whatever your task is today? Have I accomplished that in a successful way? So distill all of your successes into that, as opposed to, you know, did I hit my revenue numbers for the year, kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that, you know, every job can probably be broken down. I always tell people this: every job can probably be be broken down into you know, less than 10 critical things that make that job successful. So you, you pick sales. That's often the Achilles heel of most entrepreneurs. Um, you can't define success as I'll sell three things this week. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so what you have to do is define the path that gets you to the larger success. And so you break it down into many successes. And a lot of people do this kind of uh, intuitively. It's kind of like what I would tell entrepreneurs when you go home and you feel like you really did a phenomenal job that day. Well, think about why you feel that way and try to repeat that versus the days where you feel like you were just run under the ringer. And those are the days that you might count as to being the little failures. So with most sales, what it comes down to is it's easy for me to pinpoint when someone has a broken sales model. Literally, the first question is, is that, well, how many calls slash touches were you supposed to do in your kind of you know daily outline? And you'll hear people either say, "I didn't set up any." Well, then they never really even had a path for plan or a, a plan for success or failure. That was just a lack of planning. Mm -hmm. So then they'll tell you they're supposed to do ten, but they'll tell you that something else got in the way that day. Well, then what you can do is you—it's not hard to define that you failed at making your calls for the day. And if you do that each week, well, it's the culmination of all those little failures that lead to you missing your sales target. Yeah. If you make your calls each day, well, it's the culmination of all of those days together that help you meet your sales target. And that's really as simple as it comes down to. The same thing goes with, you know, if you're worried about expenses at, at a company uh, or let's just pick you know for for other entrepreneurs you're just doing the actual work if you 
deliver excellent results to the client more times than not, they'll be happy and, and hire you. If you deliver average results with the occasional negative result more times than not, they won't rehire you. And it really is the culmination of all those little day in and day out interactions that really help define where you're going to end up down the path. Mm. Uh, that's a great distinction between, uh, if I could go back to the, the sales example of your, sale, your, your success or your, your definition of success in sales isn't, I sold three clients today, it's, did I make my 10 sales calls that day? Um, and, I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the difference would be, I guess, base your, define your successes on things that you can control during the day, as opposed to which would be your sale, making your calls as opposed to, to getting in the, the three clients that day, which wouldn't necessarily be something that's completely within your control. Right, yeah, and I was just saying, of course, you know, these things get nuanced. Um, when you master the first level of success, you know, then you're ready to ascend to the next one, which is for, for today it was, can I make 10 calls every day? And so for the next three or four weeks, I do that, but I'm still not seeing the results. So then the next definite, you've already mastered that plane of success. So now what you move towards is can I define success as getting two appointments each day? So now if there's a gap in that next level of success, you can really analyze why that's happening. And so it could come down to, you know, if you, if you think about it, I see this all the time. The first thing you want to get people doing is activity. The next thing you want to do is get them to measure the quality of the activity. The next thing you want them to do is move higher up the plane. So I don't need to tell people each day to breathe. They already do that. You know, I don't need to tell them after a while to come to work dressed professional. They do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so you layer in these things that become just kind of part of your psyche. And that's what really I think over time builds the entrepreneur so that over time – this core foundation is just so rock solid that they do so many things just subconsciously right every day, and then they can focus on this top plane. And, and that's.